And we're asking, oh Lord, that tonight will be a night of joy, celebration for everyone in Jesus' name. Impossibilities will be possible. Mountains will roll away. Yokes will be broken. Healings will take place everywhere tonight in Jesus' name. You will prove yourself to everyone tonight. You are the God that cannot fail. Lord, we pray you open the eyes of everyone to see how great you are, how mighty you are, and that you are the God of all impossibilities. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Begin your work in every person here. And Lord, we pray no problem will remain in any life. No sickness on anyone will remain. All those infirmities we've seen before, we felt before. Tonight, everything will get away in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Tonight, we come to celebrate the God that cannot fail. Is the one that created everything we see out of nothing because it's the God that cannot fail. The one who opened the Red Sea for a whole nation to pass over the God that cannot fail. This is the God that rained manna from heaven and millions of people were fed every day for 40 years because he is a God that cannot fail. The God that brought water out of the rock for all the thirsty millions of people to drink because he is the God that cannot fail. He's the one that gave the promised land to his people. When all the giants in the land, the land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, all those giants were destroyed and defeated because there is a God that cannot fail. It's a God that brought fire out of heaven. When Elijah prayed unto God, because he is a God that cannot fail. This is the God, the God of the New Testament that opened the eyes of the blind, that made the lame to walk, that made those who are insane, those who are mad, those who had lunacy, evil spirits, they were cured immediately because of this God that cannot fail in our own day, in our own time. The God that was served, that has saved the vilest of sinners, becoming the purest of saints, because he is the God that cannot fail. We have seen him opening the eyes of the blind in our midst here and in all the places we share the word of God because he is the God that cannot fail. The one that made the lame to rise up and to walk because he is the God that cannot fail. You will not fail to remember how in our own midst that boy that had no bone in one leg that it was all flesh. And as we pray to this mighty God, while closing our eyes, before we open our eyes like this, God created bone to that leg that had no bone before. He is the God that cannot fail. I can remind you of the woman that the woman had been removed by the doctor, medical doctor. And of course, there was nobody that would be able to bring a child after the womb is removed. But that woman came to a revival meeting and then we prayed and she got back home and announced to the husband and said, the baby is coming. And the, and the husband said, are you dreaming? Don't you know the operation that was performed on you? But to cut a long story short, at the ninth month, that woman delivered and the doctor came to the church with her that she was the one that performed the operation because we serve a God that cannot fail. You've listened tonight to all these testimonies and tonight is your turn. Because this is the God that cannot fail. But my question to you is, how do you get from where you are to the next place where you ought to be? How do you move from the natural to the supernatural? How do you move from darkness unto light? How do you move from the position of dejection, of rejection, of the of infirmity where you are? And then you cross over to the place of miracle. 
you are going to move tonight out of your misery and you are going to move into miracle in Jesus name out of sickness you are going to move out of that sickness and you are going to move to the point of total complete healing in Jesus name if you are blind over there tonight, you are going to move out of that darkness. And by the time you hear the final amen after this message, your eyes will open wide. If you are lame, get ready, you are going to walk. And whatever problem you brought tonight, we serve a God that cannot fail. The God that cannot fail. He will do it in Jesus' name. I'm sure sometimes you want to, here you are, you want to cross over to the other side. But there's a river in between dividing you from where you are to where you ought to be. Until the engineers come and they build a bridge over there. And then you are able to cross over that bridge. And when you cross over the bridge, then you see that you are able to get to where you are going. Jesus came from heaven. He died on the cross of Calvary and then he has built a bridge. And through the bridge that Jesus Christ has built, everyone, we're going to walk on the bridge of Christ and we're going to get to a miracle point tonight. We're going to get to the supernatural tonight. That's why I want to tell you about the great faith bridge to the supernatural, the bridge of faith, the great faith bridge to the supernatural we're looking at mark chapter 4 in mark chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 35 mark chapter 4 verse 35 and the same day when the evening was come he said unto them let us pass over unto the other side he said unto them he comes to tell you tonight let us pass over to the other side what does that mean that means a lot of things. It means if you are blind, the other side is where you have your sight. Let us pass to the other side. It means if you are a sinner, the other side is where there is salvation. Let us pass over to the other side. It means if you are weak, let the other side is strength and power and might. Let us pass on to the other side. It means if you are poor, the other side is prosperity. Let us pass on to the other side. It means if you are barren, the other side we are talking about is fruitfulness. Let us pass to the other side and you are going to have your miracle baby in Jesus' name. What does that mean? It means that whatever need is in your life, the other side is where the miracle comes. And the miracle is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. But there's a river, a river of impossibility. There's a river, a river of darkness. There's a river, a river of dejection, a river of unbelief between you and that other side. How are we going to pass over? There is a bridge for you to cross over. All you need to do is step on that bridge, the bridge of faith, the bridge of faith, and you are going to get to the side of miracle tonight, the side of power tonight, the side of anointing tonight. There is an anointing that breaks every yoke the moment you pass over the bridge tonight in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, we're reading from verse 6. It tells us how you pass on to the other side. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. That is, as you come to God and you say, I'm on this side now. I've found the testimonies of other people. I want to have a testimony too. I want to be a testimony to you. I want to give a testimony to you. For you to give a testimony, you need to pass to the other side so that you will not be where you are at present. And thank God, you will not be where you are at present. Something is happening already. I said something is happening already. Then, but if you're going to have it without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God, he that cometh to God, there is a coming, there is a coming. You come to God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
And so it's on that bridge of faith I invite you tonight. While you are coming to uh, on that bridge of faith, I want you to have the picture of the normal, physical, natural bridge in your mind. The bridge is there. And as the bridge is there, young people can pass over. Old people can pass over. Children can pass over. Men can pass over. Women can pass over. The illiterates can pass over. And the educated can pass over. It's a bridge. And if we're going to cross over to the miracle side of life, it is this bridge of faith that will make us pass over to the miracle side of life. If you're going to pass on to the supernatural side of life, from the natural, weak, and needy, the situation where you are, it is the same faith bridge, the bridge of faith, that will make you to pass over to the supernatural side of life. The great faith bridge to the supernatural. Three things we're going to talk about. Number one, the boldness of faith. The boldness of faith. You see, faith is bold. It means that you will not count anything impossible, anything incredible, anything is unsurmountable. You will not count anything too difficult or too hard. The boldness of faith that says, tonight is my night. This moment is my moment. And I'm going to have this miracle tonight. I'm crossing over to the other side. The side of miracle, the side of healing, the side of salvation, the side of holiness, the side of sanctification, the side of power. I'm crossing over to the other side. Number one, the boldness of faith. Number two, the blessing of faith. The blessing of faith. When we have faith, blessings will flow into our lives. And thank God tonight, blessing is flowing into your life in Jesus' name. Because it is the faith of God, it is the faith we have in God that draws the blessing near, draws the blessing to everyone, the blessing of faith. Number three is the bridge of faith, the bridge of faith, the bridge of faith. And tonight, as we see that Christ has already constructed the bridge for you to pass over and to come over and to have and to achieve anything you want from the Lord. You walk on that bridge of faith and it is yours already in Jesus. Name. Number one, the boldness of faith in all seekers. Those who are seeking the Lord, those who are seeking the Lord is a boldness of faith in all seekers. Number two, the blessing of faith for all the saints, the saints of God. The people of God, the boldness of the, the, the blessing of faith for all the saints. Number three is the bridge of faith for all the seed, the seed of Abraham. Those who come to Christ and those who have the same faith as the faith of Abraham, they're called the seed, the seed of Abraham. And it is that same faith by which this great man of God, Abraham, by which he moved on to the other side. It is that same bridge of faith. We're going to cross tonight and praise the Lord. The supernatural is going to happen. Praise the Lord. Miracles are going to happen. Praise the Lord. All those things have been discerning. I wanted this. I wanted this. I wanted this. Your time has now come. I said your time has now come. The bridge of faith for all the seed. Number one is the boldness of faith in all seekers. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says in verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Before you came, the Lord has been thinking about you. And in his thought, the Lord has been planning concerning you. All those things, all your concerns, he knows about them. All the pains, he knows about them. All the need in your life, he knows about all the need. And all the challenges you face, he knows about everything. Your desires, your aspiration, 
and and the things you ask in your request before the lord i know the thoughts that i think towards you and he said thoughts of peace and not of evil evil is cancelled from your life in jesus name evil does not come from god to any of his creatures to any of his children and he says, if there's any evil at all, it's coming from the wrong side. It's coming from the devil. It's coming from Satan. But as for you, my creature, as for you, I created you. Maybe you don't know that yet. Maybe you have not given your life to Christ. That's why the Lord brought you here. So that you will realize if there's any evil, it's coming from the enemy of your soul. It's coming from the devil. But he says, there is no evil in his plan for you. It is thought for you and in his action towards you. He says his thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Your expectation as you came here tonight, that expectation will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. In verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall seek me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. The Lord is giving me assurance tonight. He's going to hear your prayer. He's going to answer your prayer. And the miracle you expect and the miracle you are praying for, it is happening already in Jesus' name. And you shall seek me. That's a seeker. That's, you're seeking the Lord. You're seeking the kingdom of God. You're seeking the salvation of the Lord. You're seeking intimate relationship and fellowship with the Lord. You're seeking blessing from the Lord. And you shall seek me and find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart. The seekers. But the seekers will need the boldness of faith. The boldness of faith. In Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're reading from verse 7. Here the Lord said, ask and it shall be given you. Ask and it shall be given you. Here is what the Lord is telling you. If you were the only person on earth, that's what Jesus would have told you. If Jesus came to you directly tonight and stands before you, this is exactly what Jesus would have told you. He says, ask and it shall be given you. You are going to ask tonight, it's going to be given unto you. Those who ask for salvation, salvation will be given unto you. Those who ask for healing, healing will be given unto you. Those who ask for help and strength, ability to stand, have a backbone that's able to stand in every situation. That strength and might and power the Lord will give to you tonight in Jesus' name. Ask and shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. He says, he's talking to the seekers. That's why you came. That's why you're saying, oh Lord, I'm searching for something. I need something. I'm seeking for something. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. For everyone. How many people? I said how many people? Everyone. Everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone that asketh receiveth, anybody there? Everyone that asketh receiveth, praise the Lord, you are the person I'm talking about. You are the woman the Lord is talking about. He says, everyone, everyone, praise the Lord, your miracle is on the way already in Jesus' name. The peace of God we have missed all these years, the peace has now come. The joy of the Lord, the joy, which is your strength that you missed all this time. This joy is available tonight because everyone that acteth receiveth. And that victory over sin, that you fall and rise, you fall and rise, but victory has now come. I said victory has now come. You'll be victorious over every temptation in Jesus' name. And then the healing. The deliverance and the power and the miracle and the supernatural that you are seeking as you have sought the Lord and you are here tonight. I want to assure you, according to the words of Jesus Christ, the word of the God that cannot fail, that miracle is already yours in Jesus' name. And he that seeketh findeth. You see that? He that seeketh findeth. The Lord is saying there's no failure. He that seeketh findeth. He's saying there's no disappointment. 
he that seeketh findeth. He says that today your joy will be full. It will be full in abundance in Jesus' name. And to him that knocketh. You are knocking at the gate of heaven. To him that knocketh. You are knocking at the door of mercy. To him that knocketh. The miracle is inside there. The power is inside there. The authority is inside there. And the victory is inside there. And it says, He that knocketh, to him that knocketh, it shall be open. The opening of the door is yours tonight in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I mean, in verse 33. The seekers, those who are seeking the Lord. Those who are seeking his glory, those who are seeking his righteousness, those who are seeking his kingdom, those who say, All I want is the will of God in my life. All I want is the glory of God in my life. All I want is the plan of God in my life. And you are seeking that, seeking that. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye for us the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He says, don't start by seeking the kingdoms of men, the kingdoms of this world, or, this, or the kingdom of society, or the kingdom of self. I want this for me, I want this for me, I want that for me. He says, seek ye for us the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he gives us the assurance and he says, and all these things shall be added unto you. An addition is coming upon your life. A multiplication is coming upon your life. That everything you need, it says, once you come here, you're seeking the Lord, you're seeking his kingdom, you're seeking the Lord, you're seeking his glory, you're seeking the Lord, you're seeking his righteousness, you're seeking the Lord, you're seeking his plan, you're seeking the Lord, you're seeking his will, and he says, all this shall be added unto you. Tonight will be your night of realization in Jesus' name. Seek it for, seek it for, seek it for us, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things, all these blessings, all these miracles, all these supernatural things will be added upon your life. We're looking at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, verse 29. John chapter 1, verse 29. It says, the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. What are you seeking? If you're seeking salvation, behold the Lamb. You're seeking healing, behold the Lamb of God. You're seeking deliverance, behold the Lamb. You're seeking the joy of the Lord, behold the Lamb. You're seeking success, behold the Lamb. You're seeking victory in your life, behold the Lamb. You're seeking the supernatural to invade your life and to take all these witnesses of the natural life away. Behold the Lamb. Tonight, if you will behold Jesus Christ and look at the face of Jesus and see the glory of God on the face of Jesus and see the power of God carried in the total embodiment of the power of God, you find it in Christ, is the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh the sin of the world, that taketh away the sin of the world. When he says he take away the sin of the world, he takes away the power of sin from our lives. He takes away the consequence of sin. Sickness is the consequence of sin. It's the result of sin. He takes that away. He takes the yoke. The yoke of sin, he takes that away from our lives. Behold the Lamb, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sin of the world, the yokes of the world, the consequences of sin, the power of sin. He takes everything away, and tonight will be your night of beholding him, of believing him. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Look at verse 36, verse 36, it says... And looking upon Jesus as a watch, he said, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. He said that before, he said that again. He says, Behold the Lamb. 
your victory is there. Look unto Christ. Look unto Christ with the boldness of faith and clear away every hindrance between you and the Lord and say, Tonight I behold the Lamb. For my healing, I behold the Lamb. For my deliverance, I behold the Lamb. For my success, I behold the Lamb. And for my fruitfulness to take all the barrenness away, I behold the Lamb. For my miracle, I behold the Lamb. And for my triumph in life, I behold the Lamb. For prosperity, I behold the Lamb. Is all things to all people. And from salvation to all sufficiency in our lives, all we need to do is look at Jesus Christ and behold the Lamb. Something good will happen to you. I said something wonderful will happen to you. All you need to do, that's why John said, John had a lot of people before him. And many of these people had different needs in their lives, different challenges in their lives, and different predicaments in their lives, different roadblocks in their lives. And he told all of them, he said, whatever you have, and whatever you need, and whatever your challenge may be, you need salvation, you need forgiveness, you need peace of mind, you need healing, you need deliverance, you need miracle, you need the supernatural, you need children, whatever it is you need, behold the Lamb. And when he said that, look at verse 37, and, and, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, and, and there we were told what Jesus said. He saw them following him, and said unto them, What seeketh ye? What seeketh ye? Why did Jesus say that? Because he knew whatever they were seeking, he was able to give to them. And I'm telling you tonight, with the boldness of faith, as Jesus is saying, why are you here? What have you come for? Is there a need in your life? Is there a problem in your family? Is there a challenge you are facing? You have the testimonies of other people, those who are saved. You find the testimony of some people, those that the, the urine was stored instantaneously, and since that time, no drop of urine coming uncontrollably. You've heard of those who are healed of real terrible sicknesses, and you have heard of the one that Jesus the Lord provided for miraculously. He was poor, but now he's rich, and the same miracle is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. All by beholding the Lamb, beholding the Lamb, believing the Lamb. That to say, I know that Jesus Christ is able and is going to take away all these challenges from my life. And tonight is that night, it's going to happen to you in Jesus' name. The boldness of faith for the seekers, for the seekers, for all seekers. Look at Psalm 27, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 27 verse 4. You need to seek the Lord and thank God you have come. Thank God you have come. You're taking the first step in seeking the Lord. You've gone the, the first lap in seeking the Lord. You've made the first move in seeking the Lord. Now, the time of prayer is when you conclude that seeking the Lord. You say, Lord, my heart is here. My mind is here. And my mind is centered on you. My focus is on you. This is what I need in my life. Salvation first. Salvation first. Eternal life first. Being born again first. Because except a man be born again, he cannot see, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Salvation first. And after that kingdom of God and his righteousness, whatever it is you need, the rest the Lord will do in your life in Jesus' name. Give me a good, good amen over there. I'm looking at Psalm 27, Psalm 27, we're looking at verse 4, Psalm 27, reading here from verse 4, seeking the Lord, the boldness of faith for all seekers. In verse 4, one thing, have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. You see, all those people that have given testimony, they had just one thing, just one thing. Lord, if you can do just this one thing in my life, one thing in my life, 
Look at the woman. One scene in my life. Look at that man. One scene in my life. And look at those children. One scene in my life. Look at that pregnant woman. One scene in my life. Look at the lame person. All I want, I want to, I want to get up and walk. One scene in my life. Look at the blind. One scene. One scene. This one thing have I desired, and this one thing I'm seeking after. And as I'm seeking that one important thing, the Lord will do it for you tonight. By the boldness of faith, you come to say, I will not be denied. I will not be denied. There is a God who cannot fail. And there is a man over here that will not give up. There is a God that cannot fail. There is a woman here that will not give up. That says, I know my God will do it. I know my God will not fail. And because I know my God will not fail, I am going to get this. I am going to get this. You will get it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 8, verse 8. When thou sayest, when thou said, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. When thou said, seek my face, seek my face, seek my face, concentrate and focus and say, Lord, I'm looking up to you. Don't you remember? When those people, the Israelites, they were being beaten by snakes in the wilderness and they were dying left, right and center. And then they prayed and said, Moses, pray for us and tell God to remove all these serpents from us. And the Lord said, make a fairy serpent and then of brass and lift it up. And whosoever will look on this serpent of brass, he will live. And so you find that this man Moses raised up that serpent of brass. And if the serpent beat anyone, young or old, with the boldness of faith, they looked away from the pain. They looked away from the serpents. They looked away from all those messengers of death. And they looked to the lamb. They looked to the, to the, to the uh, image on the, on the pole. And every one of them lived tonight. You look at Jesus Christ that is on the cross for you. And you are going to live in Jesus' name. When you said, seek my face, my heart said, O oh Lord, I will seek your face. I will seek your faith for the boldness of faith. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. In the boldness, the boldness, the boldness of faith. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him boldness of faith gives us access unto him boldness of faith the boldness of faith gives us access unto him and tonight it will happen i said tonight it will happen i said tonight it will happen because of the boldness of faith in all seekers point number two the blessing of faith for all saints, the blessing of faith for all saints. By the way, if we have faith in God, if we believe in Christ tonight, if we come to Christ by faith tonight, what are the possible blessings He will give on the basis of our faith? By faith, He gives salvation. Blessing of faith. By faith, He gives forgiveness blessing of faith. By faith he gives victory over sin. Victory over temptation. By faith, the blessing of faith. By faith he gives healing. The blessing of faith. By faith he gives deliverance. That any yoke in your life is the blessing of faith. And that yoke tonight is broken in Jesus name. Miracles. By faith miracles happen. It's part of the blessings of faith. By faith, yokes are broken, curses are removed. By faith, impossibilities become possible. By faith, barrenness goes away and you are going to have miracle children in Jesus' name. By faith, mountains of problems are taken away. It's part of the blessing of faith. The blessings of faith for all saints. And we're talking about the saints of God. Those are the people that have come to Christ. 
those are the people that have linked up with Christ by the sacrifice that he gave for us on the cross of Calvary. And as you come like that, believing in that sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you make covenant with the Lord on the basis of that sacrifice, you become a saint and then you keep on believing the Lord, believing the Lord, you are going to find all possibilities in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 50, Psalm 50 verse 5. Psalm 50 verse 5. In Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather my saints together. Gather my saints together. Those are the people the Lord wants to gather together. My saints. From a sinner, you can become a saint. By just saying, oh Lord, I've been a sinner. I cannot save myself. I look up to Jesus Christ who died for me on the cross of Calvary. And because you died for me, I know I will not remain in my sin. And it says, when your sins are forgiven like that, and when victory comes into your life, when you say, by the grace of God, the tempter came and he has nothing in me. By the grace of God, all the things that will make me to fall into sin before all those things came, and they have nothing in me. He has made me a saint. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So people gather together, gather together, gather together, gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, the final sacrifice, the full sacrifice, the free sacrifice, that's the sacrifice of Jesus, the greatest sacrifice, the acceptable sacrifice, and the sacrifice that completes every other sacrifice, that's the sacrifice of Jesus. And if you have made a covenant with the Lord, you become a child of God, you come into conversion by that sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Gather together, gather together, and then whatever you ask tonight, the Lord is ready. I said the Lord is ready, and He'll grant you, He'll give it to you in Jesus' name. Psalm 89, Psalm 89, I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 89, verse 7. In Psalm 89 verse 7, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. You see, when God does tremendous things, powerful things, miraculous things, supernatural things, in the company of the saints, in the congregation of the saints, we honor Him, we reverence Him. We hold him in high esteem. We fear him. We say, What a God is this? His fearful impresses and his glorious in power. And because of his majesty and because of his supernatural strength, because of what he does, which no other man on earth can do, because of that, we fear him. He says, God is greatly to be feared in the congregation, the assembly of the saints. And to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Look at verse 8. O Lord, God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee? Or to thy faithfulness round about thee. Then in verse 9, thou rulest the raging of the sea. Thou rulest the region of the sea. All the stormy sea your life, the Lord will bring a calm tonight in Jesus' name. And then it says, When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. It will still and it will calm all those raging storms of your life and raging storms of your family tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15. In verse 15 it says, Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. The sound of the name of Jesus, a blessed sound. The sound of the name of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the blessed sound. The sound of the God of hosts. Blessed are those people, blessed are those people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. 
in thy name shall they rejoice all the day in the name of the Lord all the day and all the night every one of us will we rejoice tonight in Jesus name joy will be your life joy will come to your soul when you see the great and the mighty things that the Lord does tonight you say I didn't know this will happen you will come for joy you will sing for joy because the miracle of joy will come to your life in Jesus name and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted for thou art the glory of their strength and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted verse 34 verse 34 in verse 34 it says my covenant will I not break that's the God that cannot fail that's the God that cannot deny us that the God who answers prayer the God who saves the God who heals the God who delivers the God who does supernatural things in the lives of all these people he says my covenant will not break nor alter the sin that has gone out of my mouth tonight is your night I said tonight is your night and the Lord will bring it to pass in your life because this is the God that cannot fail in Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 here is the assurance that is given us to assure us and to remind us that is the God of all power is the God of all possibilities and is a God that works miracles and is a God that cannot fail and the God that manifests his wonderful strength in the lives of everyone that's the God you've come to tonight and that's the God you want to confide in the God you want to believe tonight the God we're praying to tonight and wonderful wonderful great things will happen mighty things will happen your ears will hear your eyes will see how today the God that cannot fail has to come for the blessing of faith and say, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe it will happen in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son. You see that? He was so bent on blessing us. He was so committed to saving us. He was so committed to rescuing us. He was so committed to digging us up and taking us up out of the dungeon in which we were that he will not spare his only begotten son. He was so committed to healing us, so committed to delivering us, and so committed to giving us the miracles we need from heaven that he knew that the way the miracle can come, the way the power can come into our lives, is through this, is only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he spared him not, he spared him not for your salvation, he spared him not for your sanctification, for your holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, he spared him not, and for your deliverance, he spared him not, for your healing, he spared him not, for your miracle, he spared him not, Verse 32 again, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him all for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us how many things? Freely give us how many things? Freely give us how many things? All things. Praise the Lord. Tonight is that night. I said tonight is the night. Freely give us all things that's part of the blessing of faith when we come and then we believe on the lord and say lord here we are here we are all things for life all things physical all things professional all things supernatural all things spiritual all things for a christian life all things for a christian victory all things all things Praise the Lord tonight it will come. I said, praise the Lord tonight it will come. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. According as His divine power has given unto us, not that He will give, has given unto us, it's like it's done already. You can count it down. The miracle, you can count it down. 
the supernatural manifestation of the power of God in our lives, you can count it done. It is done in Jesus' name. Look at this. It says, according as his divine power. And there's nothing that can hinder that divine power. There's nothing. The purpose of God for your life, the purpose of God for blessing you, the purpose of God for digging you out of that dungeon and taking you out of that confinement, taking you out of that prison of the enemy. There's nothing that can hinder that purpose tonight. That blindness of black of that of uh, blindness, that darkness of blindness is gone away tonight, and that that weakness of paralysis is going away tonight, and the deafness in the ears of that a child is going away tonight, and the you know all the infirmity in your body, all the weakness in your body, all that is going away tonight. Praise the Lord, because there is a divine power, there is a supernatural power. We are talking of the power of the God that cannot fail. The strength of the God that cannot fail. And the supernatural oppression of the God that cannot fail. That's why it says, according to his divine power, he has given unto us all things. Look at that. He has given unto us all things. I will have all things. I will have all things. I said I will have all things. Because he has given. He has given. He, the Almighty God, the God that cannot fail, He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. The physical life, the natural life, the family life, the professional life, the secular life, the human life. He has given us all things that pertain unto life and that pertain unto godliness. Godliness, salvation is given that available. Sanctification is given that is available. Victory over sin is giving us that is available consistent walk of the lord triumphantly overcoming temptations and trials and all the troubles of life he has given that unto us already cleansing holiness righteousness is giving us all things pertaining to godliness and then he tells us through the knowledge of god that's the god that cannot fail and of jesus our lord then it goes on to say that through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Glory in your life in Jesus' name. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. Are you there? Partakers of the divine nature. I said, where are you? Partakers of the divine nature. Where are you? Partakers of the divine nature. Where are you? Partakers of the divine nature. Amen. Say to yourself, I'm a partaker of his divine nature. As I say it for yourself, I'm a partaker of his divine nature. As I say it for said, I'm a particular of a divine nature. In the divine nature, there is no sin. I'm a particular of his divine nature. In the divine nature, there is no weakness. I'm a particular of his divine nature. In his divine nature, there's no failure. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. In his divine nature, there is no infirmity. There is no, there's no infirmity of the devil. I'm a partaker of his divine nature because he has called us to become the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped. Praise the Lord, I have escaped. Praise the Lord, you escape darkness. Praise the Lord, you escape your sickness. Praise the Lord, you escape all the power of the devil and of the people of the world. You escape tonight in Jesus' name. I mean, escape the corruption that is in the world through loss. And all this is by faith. All this is by faith. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're reading from verse... 20, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Tonight, tonight is your night. I said tonight is your night. Look at this, chapter 3, chapter 3 of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 20. It says, now, what is your blessing? Now, what is your miracle? Now, what are you going to get this thing you have come for? Now, what is the supernatural going to happen in your life? Now. 
now unto him that is able that's a god that cannot fail the god that cannot fail he gave the children to abraham and sarah at old old age our god is able he opened the Red Sea before his people. Our God is able. He conquered and defeated all those Canaanites before the children of Israel. Our God is able. He brought water for them out of the rock. Now, unto him that is able, our God is able. He rained manna from heaven for those hungry millions of people. Now, unto him that is able, our God is able. And when Jesus came to this world, he said, He that has seen me has seen the Father came as the representation of the Father. I came as the express image of the Father. And we knew that he lost no case. He failed in nothing at all. He demonstrated the power of the God that cannot fail. Now unto him that is able. He opened the eyes of the blind. That's unto him that's able. He made the lame to walk. That's him that is able. He will stop the deaf ears and made the dumb to speak. That's the God that is able. And the woman that was bowed down by the devil, by Satan, for 18 years, he said, Woman, thou art loose. And she came up straight immediately because it's a God that cannot fail. And then the woman that had issue of blood 12 years, everything came to an end immediately because now unto him that is able tonight, I come to announce to you that they is God that cannot fail, He is able. I said, He is able, and He will roll all your mountains away in Jesus' name. Now, unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek, according to the power that worketh where in us. That power is going to work in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. It says in verse 16, and taking the shield of faith. And taking, and above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All those fiery darts of the wicked tonight. I bring them to nothing in your life in Jesus' name. Number one is the boldness of faith. Number two is the blessing of faith. Number three is the bridge of faith. The bridge of faith. The bridge of faith for all the seed. The bridge of faith for all the seed. When we say seed, we're talking of the seed of Abraham. Let's see how it happened to Abraham himself to start with. In Genesis chapter 12, he is the beginning of this journey of faith. He is the beginning of the people that get on the bridge, the bridge of faith, the bridge of faith. After Abel, then you have Enoch. After Enoch, then you have Noah. After Noah, then you have Abraham. And Abraham is like a forefront example because we become of the seed of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Where he was, he possessed nothing. And the Lord was bringing him to a new possession, a great possession, a lifelong possession, an eternal possession. And he was to do that and cross over by the bridge of faith. That's how Abraham did it, by the bridge of faith. He said, come out, get out of where you are, and step on this bridge of faith. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know how large, how expansive. He didn't know how rich a love flowing with milk and honey. How could he tell? And yet, by this bridge of faith, he got up and he began to go. And he got there. You will get there tonight. Look at verse 2. And the Lord said, in this promise of what he was going to get, if he could get on this bridge of faith and get over there, in verse 2 it says, And I will make of thee a great nation. 
Do you know that God is going to make something great out of you? I said you tonight, I'm looking at you now. God is going to make something great out of you in Jesus' name. He was a nobody. God said, I'm going to make somebody out of you. He was very small. God said, I'm going to make something great out of you. I rejoice with you today because as you get on this bridge of faith tonight, something great and supernatural is going to happen in your life in Jesus' name. Here is the promise of the I will make of me a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thee and make thy name great. And make thy name great. Abraham is gone. Why is this one written? It's written because of you. I said it's written because of you. Because it's passing from Abraham and it's passing to the siege of Abraham. Your name will be great. Your life will be great. Your possession will be great. Everything concerning you will pass from smallness to greatness in Jesus' name. And then it says, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. I will bless them that bless thee. I thought you will say amen to that. And curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. You have to take the step of faith. You have to get up. You have to walk on that bridge of faith. You have to put your life in the hands of Jesus. And you have to say, take me where you want to take me. I want to get to that greatness. I want to get to that supernatural height. I want to get to that miracle, miracle terrain. I want to get to that place of earmark for me. Then you have to get up and walk by faith and go on the bridge of faith. And that's what Abraham did. He got up and he departed. And they were told that he got there. You will get there in Jesus' name. Let's look at the interpretation of that in Hebrews chapter 11. The interpretation of what happened to Abraham in chapter 11 verse 8 of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. It says, by faith Abraham. If you only read Genesis chapter 12, you will not know that there was faith in the heart of that man. He believed. He believed. He believed. And that was the moment he got up and he went to the bridge of faith to go unto the Lord. That's when supernatural things began to happen in his life. And the moment you get up in your own heart, in your mind, and then you say, I'm going to walk on the bridge of faith. I'm going to Jesus. I'm going for salvation. I'm going for healing. I'm going for deliverance. I know he is my all in all. He is my sufficiency. And you get away from the seat of weakness. You get away from the seat of your past. And say, I'm going to Jesus. My heart, my life, everything I've got within and land and without belongs to Jesus from now on. When you step on that bridge of faith, the supernatural begin in your life in Jesus' name. It says, by faith, Abraham... When he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed wonderful. He obeyed wonderful. He obeyed. You say when the Lord calls you and then there's no delay. When the Lord calls you, there's no indecision. When the Lord calls and say, I'm going to obey, that makes you obey. It says you obeyed and they were told and he departed. He obeyed and he went. He went out not knowing whither he went. That was the beginning of miracle life. And tonight is the beginning of your miracle life. I said tonight is the beginning of your miracle life. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith. What we are talking about? 
boldness of faith, a taste of faith, blessing of faith, a taste of faith, the breach of faith, a taste of faith, therefore, a taste of faith that it might be by grace to the end for the purpose for this reason the promise might be sure to all the seed not only abraham now all the seed of abraham all the seed of abraham it says that may be fulfilled to all the seed not to that only which is of the lord but to that also which is of the face of abraham who is the father of us all Jews and Gentiles of us all men and women of us all young and old of us all black and white of us all illiterate and educated of us all newcomers and old timers of us all is the father of us all the moment you believe the moment you believe 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 in the lord that jesus died for you on the cross of calvary brings you to that assembly of faith the congregation of faith and is the father of us all as it is written in verse 17 i have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he whom he believed even god who, who quickened the dead and called those things would be not as though they were in your life tonight I call those things would be not as though they were. In your family tonight, I call those things would be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith, they considered not his own body now dead. Be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now being dead. You don't consider your weakness anymore, not weak in faith. You don't consider your failures of the past anymore, not weak in faith. You don't consider all the things the devil made you do in the past, and he says, You will never get up. You never, you say, I'm getting up, I'm getting out of this, and you are getting out of that in Jesus' name. You don't consider your blindness anymore, your lameness anymore, your weakness anymore, your barrenness anymore, your infertility anymore, because now something is going to happen as you cross over this bridge of faith in Jesus' name. He says, Be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, not being dead. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But then we're told he was strong in faith. Strong in faith. Every step in faith, every step he took, step of faith. Every walk he made, it was a walk of faith. Walking on the bridge of faith. And he knew that that bridge was strong enough to carry him and to take him. And then he says, giving glory to God and be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. There's a performance tonight. I said there's a performance tonight. I look at you over there, I say there's a performance over here i say tonight is the night of performance in your life in jesus name see you there tonight is the night of performance in jesus name are you ready i said are you ready that tonight is the night of performance in jesus name i see you there i said i see you there night of performance i said night of performance where are you? Where are you? Night of performance? What? Wonderful, wonderful. Night of performance is happening in Jesus' name. You get up now, you get up now, and we're going to walk on the bridge of faith. I'm getting there. I said, I'm getting there. Salvation, I'm getting there. Victory, I'm getting there. And then healing, I'm getting there. Deliverance, I'm getting power, I'm getting there. Anointing that breaks the yoke, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You are getting there tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm here today. I'm here today. We're walking on the bridge of faith. We're walking on the bridge of faith. We're getting out of where we are. 
no weakness anymore, no sickness anymore, no infirmity anymore, and that there's no barrenness anymore. I'm getting up tonight out of this place of the bridge of faith. I'm walking on 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 the bridge of faith. I'm walking. Get up, get up, get up, and you tell the Lord, Look at all those problems to see tonight, 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 tonight. Everything is vanishing away in Jesus' name. Tonight, everything is vanishing away in Jesus' name. Open your mouth, open your mouth, and talk to and say, Lord, days in the night, days in the night, blind eyes will soon open. The lame will soon rise up and walk. Tuberculosis will soon leave your body right now. All the weakness will soon leave your body right now. All that infirmity will soon leave your body right now. Power is coming your way. Authority is coming your way. The anointing that breaks the yoke is here tonight because we serve a God, the God that cannot fail. The God that cannot fail. The God that cannot fail. Hurry up, hurry up. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord. Picture in your mind. Look at the bridge. Look at the bridge. In your mind, look at the bridge and say, I'm getting on this bridge. Or you're standing there, I'm getting on this bridge. Well, sunny day, I'm getting on that on this bridge. You're weak. You say, My health is on that side, my strength is on that side, my miracle is on that side. I'm getting on the bridge of faith and I'm walking to that strength right now, walking to that miracle, right? walking to that past, past performance right now, walking to that possession right now. It's there, it's there. You tell the Lord now and say, Lord, here I am, Lord, here I am. I'm getting on this bridge of faith. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. And remember the beginning. The beginning is this faith that gets you forgiveness from, of some sin. Is this bridge is the step that gets you the salvation of the Lord. The salvation of the Lord. And whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, the thief call upon the name of the Lord, the robber call upon the name of the Lord, the worldly person call upon the name of the Lord, the defiled person call upon the name of the Lord, the man and the woman of flesh call upon the name of the Lord, the defiled man, the defiled woman call upon the name of the Lord, and the one that is feeling guilty and condemned call upon the name of the Lord and the sinner. You know you are a sinner and you want to be saved. You want to have the salvation of the Lord. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is present right now. Forgiveness available right now is the very first step we take as we, as we step upon the bridge of faith. The very first step. The very first step for salvation, for forgiveness, for eternal life. That he almighty God will write your name in the book of life. And then you say, praise the Lord, my sins are gone. Praise the Lord, my sins are gone. I am saved. I am saved. I'm born again. I have eternal life. My name is in the book of life. My name is written in the book of life. It's doing it right now. Get away from your sin and say, I believe Jesus is my savior. Jesus is the Lamb of God. He took all my sins away. Jesus is my Redeemer. He has taken all my sins. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. That's the moment of your salvation. That is the moment of your salvation. Then it gives you victory over sin. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, and behold, and behold, all things have become new. He that stole will not steal anymore. He that was in darkness will not be in darkness anymore. The defiled fleshly man or woman will not be defiled anymore. The unrighteous will not be unrighteous anymore. The sinner will not be in sin anymore. The old creature, defiled creature, condemned creature, guilty creature will not be condemned and guilty anymore. No condemnation anymore. There will be new life, new life, eternal life, victorious life. And then he'll tell you, neither do I condemn you, your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. 
There's a moment in your mind's eyes. Get up and walk on that bridge of faith and come to Jesus. Get up and walk on that bridge of faith and come to Jesus. Get up and come in that bridge of faith and come to Jesus. He'll do it right now. He'll do it right now. He's the God that cannot fail. The God that cannot fail. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's bow the nice clothes. You want to take that step right now. You feel the guilt of sin. The burden of sin. The load of sin upon your life. And you want that forgiveness of the Lord right now. Eternal life. Salvation of the Lord. That will make the almighty God to take the heavenly pen. Set it on the heavenly book of life. And then write your name. And the angels will see that you tonight you gave your life to Christ and you become a child of God old things instantaneously will pass away from your life all things will become new they will be singing rejoicing in heaven because of that step of faith tonight welcome Welcome into the kingdom. It's bad and eyes closed. You want that free conscience, cleansed conscience, and your sins forgiven. Eternal life coming into you. The Lord Himself writing your name in that book of life. Just raise up your hand. A sign of surrender. That means I surrender to Jesus tonight. Where are you? Just raise up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Raise up that hand. Thank you. Raise up that hand. You feel the guilt of sin, the burden of sin. And you're saying, Lord, I come tonight. Lord, I come to you tonight. For you, Christ died. For you, Jesus gave his life. And he says, I'll forgive. I'll forgive. Those who are raising up their hands, step out of that place where you are. Come right to the front of the hall where you are. This hall, that hall, that hall. Keep on, just, just come. You're raising up your hand. You want Jesus to be your savior. You want Jesus to wipe away well your sin. And for this miracle of salvation, miracle of forgiveness, to be your heart, your life today. Thank you very much. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. The miracle of salvation, miracle of eternal life to happen tonight thank you thank you thank you keep on coming the lord sees you right there just come to the front of the hall where you are come to the front of the hall where you are lord tonight is the night i'm walking on the bridge of faith i'm coming out of my sin i'm coming out of my evil thank you keep coming keep coming keep coming praise the lord there's joy in heaven for every sinner that comes and he says, I give myself, behold the Lamb of God that takes away all the sin of the world. Keep on coming. Thank you. God bless you. What a joyful day. What a joyful moment. A day of joy in heaven and on earth for everyone that comes to the Lord. And he says, tonight I abandon my sin. I abandon my evil. I abandon all my past ways. I break the connection between me and occultism and secret society. I break every connection with all the things I've been doing in the past. Lord, I come. Keep on coming. We're waiting for you. Keep on coming. Thank you, members of the choir, for helping us at this time. And thank you, our coordinators, our pastors, and all those counselors. Thank you very much. Get to them. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. These are brothers and sisters who are also coming to help you out because they love you. Keep on coming. We're going to pray together now. And as we pray, eternal life will be yours in Jesus' name. The joy of salvation will fill your soul. You'll never be the same in your life in Jesus' name. As you come, just raise up your hand. I know you are there, but raise up your hand. Just raise up your hand. It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of surrender. When a little child wants the mother, the father to take her up, or anybody to take her up, they should raise up their hand. You want the Lord to take you up. Take you up. Drag you out of the pit of sin. 
drag you out of that degradation, out of the death, out of all the sins you have, and then bring you on the mountain top of joy and laughter and triumph and salvation. As you raise up here, let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these our new brothers and sisters who have now come. Oh Lord, I pray all the sins of their past life, forgive them in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray right now, according to your promise, they have stepped up. And they are walking on the bridge of faith to come to God through Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I pray their salvation is not in themselves. Their salvation is not in the works of man. Their salvation is in Christ who died for them on the cross of Calvary. Save them in Jesus' name. And I pray that that new life, eternal life that comes to everyone that comes upon the name of the Lord, grant unto them right now in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation fill their hearts. Let the conscience that was dead before come alive in Jesus' name. The soul, the spirit that was dead in sins and trespasses in the past, let it come alive unto God in Jesus' name. And the spiritual strength and power to live a righteousness from now on, grant unto every one of them. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now when a soul comes to Christ, uh, when the soul repents and is born again, there is joy in heaven. If there is joy in heaven, I thought there would be joy on earth. Joy in heaven and joy on earth. Joy in heaven and joy on earth. God bless every one of you. I say God bless every one of you. If I'm saying that for you, then you will respond. I said, every one of you, God bless you. Yeah. We're going to give a few minutes and we want to take the names of these and new brothers and new sisters who now have eternal life, salvation, forgiveness, and they are new creatures in Christ. And now, after we spend a few minutes doing that, something is coming your way. I said something is coming your way. Let the lame get ready to rise up and walk and jump. Let the blind get ready to see. Let all, you know, you have any problem, any challenge, get ready. Something is happening tonight in Jesus' name. I'm going to call one of our pastors to just direct us uh, at this time now. Uh, so that uh, we, you know, get all these names. And then after that, something, something, something is happening. I said something is happening.
Let's settle down. As the man of God will be praying for us. Let's please round up quickly and set you down for the time of prayer. Let's set you down in all the halls and let's get ready for our miracle prayer tonight. Are you ready? I said, praise the Lord. Remember, remember, we are crossing over from the natural to the supernatural through the bridge of faith. And the moment you step up and say, look at the bridge, look at the bridge. The John can pass over, the old can pass over. You are passing over to your miracle right now in Jesus' name. As I told you already, there's good performance in every hall performance in every hall and outside those who are outside and those who are in their cars performance coming your way right now in jesus name all the states and all the regions all the locations where you are and you are hearing the sound of my voice now performance is coming your way in every nation where you are a performance of miracle performance of miracle is coming in jesus name after the prayer, if you were blind before you open your eyes, you'll be able to see. After the prayer, if you were lame before you just rise up, you'll find that there's strength there. Everything is done in Jesus' name. After the prayer, the person there that the leg was broken, and then you are cast. When you get up, you find that everything is okay in Jesus' name. Performance. Everybody shout performance. Everybody shout performance. Look at that sickness there, that Egyptian that you'll never see it again in Jesus' name. Where are you? Just lay your hand in the place where you have the problem and then raise up the other hand. It's coming your way. It's coming your way right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we magnify you because you are the God that cannot fail. You heal the sick today, you are the God that cannot fail. You deliver the oppressed, you are the God that cannot fail. You do impossibilities in many lives, you are the God that cannot fail. Miracle today, miracle today, miracle today in Jesus' name. I pray right now the pain in your body, the sickness in your body, come out in Jesus' name. I'm asking for those who are deaf and dumb, I pray that sound will burst into your ear right now. And those tongues that are tied, lose those tongues, speak out, and hear in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that those who are blind, I remove the bandage of the devil from your eyes. I remove the darkness from your eyes. I command your blindness, come out in Jesus' name. I command these blind eyes to be open and begin to see right now. Open your eyes and see. Open your eyes and see. Lord God of heaven, the God that cannot fail, confirm it in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, I pray right now the Lord will touch your weak legs and your weak hands and your spine. The Lord will touch you right now in Jesus' name. In the strength of the Lord, the might of the Lord, rise up and walk. In the power of the Lord, rise up and walk. Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. All those who have what they call incurable disease, HIV, AIDS, or tuberculosis, or diabetes, or cancer, or whatever, I command all those diseases be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are barren, give them their miracle children. 
and those who are poor lord i pray that their joys and prosperity will come in jesus name i command that insanity right there that spirit of insanity come out in jesus name lord i pray that every burden of the devil every yoke of the devil i break it right now every curse upon your life i break it right now all the works of the devil be destroyed from their lives in jesus name right now lord moment of miracle right now lord moment of power right now lord moment of authority performance in every life performance in every life performance in every life Confirm it in Jesus' name. Lord, at the final amen, miracle. At the final amen, breakthrough. At the final amen, healing. At the final amen, deliverance. Confirm it right now. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Check it out. The miracle is there right now. If you are blind, before just open your eyes. Open your eyes. You are not blind anymore. Just open your eyes. I know it here. I know it here. Open your eyes and now you can see. If you were lame before you had an accident and then your leg was crushed and broken, now the, the leg is all right. Rise up and now you can walk. And whatever you brought any child that was there for dumb, you can talk to them right now. They can hear. It's there. It's there. And then you had any incredible disease before, whatever cancer, whatever it is, and check it up now. All those cancer germs are dried up in Jesus' name check it up check it up you can come check it up check it up you can and, and when when you just to see it let's shout amen there we are rejoicing with you over here check up 